Now I want to, you to keep in, keep in mind, if you, listen to, if you listen to it, the very last sentence in the Gospel this evening. And it is, of all those born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. But the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Kind of paradoxical statement or a kind of backhanded compliment to John. And how do we explain that? Well, you got to look at the first reading, you got to look at, at the reading from the gospel and what Jesus said. And, and then we'll, you'll see uh, what this statement really means. Now, before we do that, there's a, a, a description um, of two kinds of different kinds of judgments in the gospel this evening are of, um, well, yes, justice. There's a one which the world normally understands we call retributive justice. So somebody does something wrong and we punish them. That's retributive justice. The other kind of justice we'll come to in a couple of minutes is restorative just, justice. You restore, you try to restore the person to who they really are, to the true person. Now, very briefly, if we look at the two, and we see the difference. And the difference I see is in retributive justice, as we know, some form of retributive justice is necessary. So when, when you're younger, and for example, if you're a parent, if you never discipline your children, sometimes you have to, either by, you know, uh, sending them to, to the room or denying them some privilege. But it doesn't, and that's a, that's a punishment, but it doesn't really bring about any great change in them. The same way if you lock somebody up for six months or six years for some thing they did wrong and that's it, it doesn't bring about any great change in that person. They probably end up more angry and bitter. It doesn't bring about any great change. Now on the other hand, restorative justice you try and restore the person to who they really are. And if you think about it, if you do evil, if you're guilty of some kind of evil or wrongdoing or corruption, are you a happy person? And I think the answer is no. And evil, doing of evil brings its own punishment. It really, it really does. It takes away any kind of happiness, or joy, and it defiles you as a person. On the other hand, um, well, I need to give you some examples. And I think a good, a good example is, um, if there's anybody here at Mass this evening who is a recovering alcoholic, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. Somebody who has a drug problem or an alcohol problem or some other kind of a addiction, you can, you can punish them, you can argue with them. Um, it happens in families. The, the addict hurts everybody all around him. Most of all, the people who are closest to him and the people who love him most hurts them, causes them, causes them great pain, great pain, and they do their best. Look what you're doing. You're hurting everybody. You're offending everybody, but the person doesn't really change until one day, until someday, they come to the realization, this is no good. I'm sick of being sick. I'm tired of being sick. I need to change. They have to come to their senses, so to speak, and they go and seek help. And, 
and they become to totally honest. To totally honest. And if you meet a person who has done the 12 steps or been through the recovery program, they are really, really wonderful people. They have a compassion and an understanding that most of us never have, or most people never have. They have a whole different attitude to life, and they become a much better person than ever they could have been if they hadn't gone through that, that stage in their life, which is amazing. That now, going back to John the Baptist. John the Baptist came, and he was all about repentance, and if you don't repent, you're going to be damned, and you're going to be condemned, and you're going to be punished, so you better watch out. That was John, John, John the Baptist. Jesus came, on the other hand, full of mercy and full of compassion. Full of mercy and full of compassion. And that is why Jesus could say this evening at the end of the gospel, of all the people born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. But the least here in this room who is a, re is a recovering sinner is greater in the, in the kingdom than John the Baptist. What, what a statement. Somebody who, going back to the recovery program, you got to make amends. You got to go back. Now, I spent some 20 years um, as a chaplain to, to, when I was in England, to the Manchester Police Force. There was a wonderful man, the chief, during some of my time there was a wonderful man, a great Catholic, and he began a program called Restorative Justice. Very simply, somebody commits a crime, for example, attacking a person on the street, an older person, injuring them, knocking them down, robbing their purse, and running away with it. You can lock them up, but they come out and they do the same thing again. And he was all for trying to get the offender or the perpetrator of the crime go and sit in front of the person to whom they had stolen the purse or, or injured and talking to them if the, per if the victim was willing to see them and making amends. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for what I've done, I've done to you. Brings about a total change, a total transformation. And that's the difference, really, between John the Baptist and Jesus, and that's why Jesus said that. Now, most of us, be honest, we are followers of John the Baptist, huh? and we're not followers of Jesus. We're not. Because I find, you know, so many people in confession, and I've been hearing confessions for 55 years, they don't really believe. They don't really believe in the forgiveness of sin. They come, they go through, through, through the motions. I think I might have told you before, there was an old lady in Dublin. She used to go to confession every, every week. And she was now well into her 80s. And she'd tell a few sins, and then she'd always finish off it. Oh, and by the way, Father, I committed adultery. And, and um, so the priest would know, and said, well, when did this happen? And she said, oh, um, probably about 65 years ago, Father. And he said, well, you know, when you tell your sin, when you come to confession, everything is forgiven. You don't have to keep telling it over and over again. Do you believe in the forgiveness of God? Oh, sure, sure, I, I do. Of course I do, Father. But, but she said, Father, Sure, I love to talk about it. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> and that's the way it is with some people. There's no, I, I feel, there's no real, you know, they don't accept God's forgiveness. And I don't know about you, but I have a certain amount of difficulty when I hear um, 
people saying, I'm sorry for all, for all my sins, for, um, uh, for the fear of hell and the loss of heaven. I, I find that, I have to think about that. If I, I feel when I confess, why am I doing it? I'm confessing to a God who loves me, absolutely. And I've offended somebody who loves me, absolutely. Now, put that in the human situation. If somebody you love, for example, your husband, your wife, and they offend you, you don't, why do you ask for forgiveness? Because of their love for you, not because the fear of punishment or anything else. And so, you know, if you go and do that for, because of fear, uh, I've, I find that difficult. I find, it, I find it difficult. I do it to apologize to somebody who loves me, God, Jesus. And that brings us nicely now, before I finish, to um, Tuesday night. Uh, we have a lovely, a lovely reconciliation service here. And it's all about just mercy and forgiveness. And I always, I'm always saying to people when they come to confession, God knows what you need to be forgiven for, so you don't have to make a big list. And don't worry about something you, you forget about. God knows better than you do or I do what you need forgiveness for. And so we do it in a very nice way here. We come, we begin sharp at seven o'clock. Uh, we'll um, bless the sacrament here. We'll have a little prayer, uh, a, a nice, some nice music. And then you decide um, just what you want to say. And you come to one, to one of the priests here who will be, who will be along here and simply say, I'm, I'm sorry for all my sins and I seek forgiveness, especially for my sins against whatever, charity or justice or whatever. Finish. And then you go back to your seat. Now you can't go home because you haven't received absolution yet. So, you're, so, you, so you, you, have to, you have to wait. And that's why we do it quickly and within, within an hour. And as Cambria will tell you in a few minutes' time, we'll be out of here within that hour. And so I hope you all come here on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, and you'll be on the way home at before 8 o'clock. And if not, it's because you want to remain here and you want to share your joy. And I must say, looking at the most of you, you need forgiveness. <laughs> right.